to help them to maintain their Spanish, but to add the English into their language. So if someone says, well, what's your goal, or what's the goal of bilingual education, you would say? It is to be able to function in English in school and to be able to read and write and um, uh, continue to work in all the content areas in English. By the end of fifth grade, about 60% of the students here are considered fluent in English. Veteran teacher Sal Castro believes bilingual education works because students feel welcome. Give them success in, in whatever language. If it takes, if they come in with knowing more Martian, give them the Martian language so they'll succeed. Because this is all educational psychology jargon. They must succeed early. And if they succeed early, they'll like school, they want to stay in school, and they want to succeed in school. So it, uh, one, one hand helps the other that way. But in most bilingual education programs, it often appears that one hand does not know what the other hand is doing. Do you have a sense of whether this school does bilingual education well? I don't think I don't think bilingual education is done well here at all. Why do you say that? Uh, well, based upon the number of students who transition into English. In the last two years, only eight out of 950 students have made the transition at his school, Menlo Avenue Elementary in Los Angeles. In bilingual education, first grade instruction should be in Spanish. But Angela Benson McDaniel does not speak Spanish. Instead, she provides what she calls an alternative program in English. I can't do a program that I can't I don't, I don't believe in. I couldn't offer that to my children and give them something that I'm supposed to do, but I couldn't feel strong about. Los esfuerzos eran boicotería, huelga, la huelga, y qué más. By fourth grade, most instruction should be in English, but in this classroom, the teaching is almost entirely in Spanish. Y después de las huelgas, ¿cómo se? Se bajaron un poquito más. Okay. I was told that they can't be writing in English, you know, get, only, except for ESL. You know, I can't tell them, okay, we're going to write a, a page, and I want you guys to write it in English. Students at Menlo Avenue have been exposed to all sorts of instruction, English only, Spanish only, and a mixture of both. But this year, they're in an all bilingual class, and the teachers speak Spanish, so they're being flip-flopped, you know, in these, like, in these programs. Yeah. There is another problem. Do you have books in English? Um, I don't have books in English. Um, like the core books, like this history book. I don't have English books, and I don't have enough Spanish books to go around. Because Los Angeles does not have enough qualified bilingual teachers, it gives out emergency credentials to college graduates like Cesar Garcia. Garcia has little teacher training and no teaching experience. In all, 36% of Menlo Avenue's teachers hold emergency credentials, including Rigoberto Garcia, who teaches fifth grade. It's eased up a bit in the sense that I know what I'm supposed to be teaching. I know the curriculum, at least the fifth grade. I'm not an expert in it, but um, I heard you're not, you don't become an expert teacher until you got at least a couple years under your belt. I only have a couple months, so I'm working my way up there. H how old are you? I'm 22. This is your first teaching? Yeah, it's my first teaching assignment, yes. At the end of the year, Garcia's students will be tested, but he has not been told if the exam will be in English or in Spanish. Yeah, it's a little vague. We, right now, we don't know what we're going to be testing on. I got information at the beginning of the year, when at least when we started, that we were going to be testing both languages. We're going to take the Stanford 9 and Aprenda. Stanford 9 is in English, Aprenda is in Spanish. Now, um, I just got, or maybe it's a rumor or what have you, that the district is kind of swaying um, the whole district to just take the Aprenda exam. OK, bueno, antes de empezar el examen que vamos a tomar, vamos a hacer un poquito de repaso de uno de los conceptos que vamos a encontrar en el examen. Mr. Garcia seems like a nice man. He's new, though. Yes. Who was your teacher at the beginning? The first one teaching, but he was a police, so he's Yeah. Huh? So we can work at the night. So um, in the morning, he came to to sleep. Oh, sleep. To sleep during yeah. class? Yeah. Oh. He, he, he said, oh, okay, do math at page 31. Then we started, and then when he, he see that everyone was, was doing math, he started to sleep. 
you would fall asleep? Yeah. What do parents say about this? You know, for the most part, parents in these communities, they kind of don't know what's going on. They feel that the school's taking care of it. They know what they're doing. You know, if they tell them, you know, your son's going to be doing better in this bilingual program, then they're going to say, Okay, you know best. But Latino I'm, parents tend to sit, to respect the authority. Yeah, of the school. exactly. And but, but you think that they're getting? I don't think they really understand what's going on. What parents may not understand is their school's track record. In the past two years, only eight Menlo Avenue students have made the leap to English fluency. Disappointing results like those at Menlo Avenue have given bilingual education a bad name. But bilingual education, good or bad is used in only 30% of California's classrooms. Most Latino students here are exposed to a hodgepodge of programs, and 16% receive nothing at all. Chris Gutierrez is professor of education at UCLA. If you go and study Latino schools as I do, and you see a, a range of schools throughout the city, it won't take a rocket scientist to figure out that there, the opportunity to learn and the kinds of uh, context for learning that these kids have are so qualitatively different than other kids. The distribution of educational resources is, is a more powerful determinant, for example, than racial prejudice. Roberto Suro, a reporter for the Washington Post, is the author of Strangers Among Us, a book about the impact of Latino immigration in the United States. When you look at a community like the Latino immigrant community in various parts of this country, um, the kind of education that they're offered um, is, is, a, is the most powerful force in determining where that second generation is going to end up. Instead of providing more teachers and books to ensure successful bilingual education, Californians voted overwhelmingly in June of 1998 to ban the program. When a court challenge failed, the ban went into effect. When Menlo Avenue and Woodlawn opened in August, teaching was in English. Woodlawn hopes to save its bilingual program, but parents have to vote for it. Proposition 227 specifically endorses the approach to teaching non-English speakers known as English immersion, which immerses students in English for the entire day. As with bilingual education, the goal is English fluency. When Jan Tuin's kindergarten students enrolled at Taft Elementary School in Santa Ana six months ago, most of them spoke no English. And, not A, but and. A. Here we go. They go to a star. No, it is definitely not a sink or swim program. Uh, we, we use all kinds of visuals for the children. We model everything very closely. We do use the sign language. Teachers often use sign language to illustrate the meaning of words. Most of Taft's 42 teachers are not bilingual. Do you speak Spanish to them? I don't speak Spanish, but Miss Lades, our uh, assistant, uh, does speak Spanish with the children. If there's something that they need to convey, like an idea, feeling, something more abstract, then I have them talk to her. She translates. How many of you can speak English now? Me. How many of you like to speak English? Me. See, they like to speak English. Would you characterize yourself as an English-only person? Oh, heavens no. I love being bilingual. In fact, I'm working on becoming trilingual. No, English only. I would characterize myself as being an English literacy advocate. First grade teacher Gloria Mata Tuckman, who is Mexican-American, has become nationally known for her support of English immersion. English immersion, sheltered English immersion, is nothing new that has been created. I mean, it's been around for generations and generations, decades and decades. And it is really a very simple process in teaching English. If you can speak English, you can teach English. Okay, just a minute. Do you see? Show me where the tin box is. Yeah. And what does it say on the tin box right here? Go fish. What do you think is inside that box? Fish. What did he do? He ate the fish. You're widely recognized as, a, as an opponent of bilingual education. Why are you so critical of bilingual education? Because it really delays the learning of English. That's it in a nutshell. It does not teach English. Teach the 